early then I just had a, um, a very small sort of walk on part as the aide de camp to Governor Gray, who was played by Corin Redgrave. And uh, oh God, I was only in about four scenes. But the funny thing was that ne that was being edited next door to where I was working. I was working on a documentary of some sort, editing that. And the editor, I think it was Jamie Selkirk, bless him, um, he knew I was next door and I could hear him laughing and going, ah, oh, Duffy, God, oh, it's terrible. And I well, rushed in there and he was busy just rewinding all my footage and takes onto the floor and sort of said something, you're bloody useless, we can't use any of this. <laughs> he is a very naughty man, delightful human being. So there was a lot of, because um, they knew I was involved in the acting, so I used to get a bit of stick for it. Of all the, of my uh, filming experiences, that was the most pleasurable. And I think it's because I was so new to it and I was learning so much from some pretty seasoned actors who were around me, Terence Cooper and Don Selwyn and Bruce Allpress. So I was also learning a lot. And meeting Don and, uh, and Terence was, um, was terrific. We got on very well, the three of us, which was, um, that isn't always the case, of course, but we were really like sort of very close and socially as well. I've watched a couple of them now, and some of them almost unwatchable, you know, compared to, um, you know, to the, to the very uh, fast-paced idea of what drama is now. Um, there's one I watched where uh, my character, Dimp, comes into the police station and, and Donnie's character, Bob, is there, and it's, uh, morning, morning, Bob. Morning, Dimp. Would you like a cup of tea, Bob? Oh, that'd be nice, Dimp. Where are the biscuits, Bob? No, oh, mortar, mort, eating them all. And then Terence would make, morning, and it's sort of very Python-esque, because morning, morning, this goes on for ages. You ate all the biscuits, Mort. Yeah, well, they, you, know, you don't need biscuits, you young whippersnapper, and all this sort of thing. This goes on for bloody ages, you know. It was, had a very gentle pace to it. And we shot shooting on film, and if we got four or five minutes in the can, you know, we were pretty proud of ourselves. Uta was a great film. It was a good film. It was sort of like a New Zealand Western. And a lot of fun making it. When I think back about the conditions, though, the, you know, what people did, uh, I don't think they do that now. It really just um, hours and... I don't know if our overtime was ever being paid and the poor people were being paid at all. But I rode a horse and I was on that with Johnny Bache. And John is a very strong horse person. And he took fine exception to the way the horses were treated. And we were doing a second, uh, second unit shoot, which required a group of us to be on our horses. And we got down on location and they had the horses there and um, John Bates pointed out to the uh, second unit director, said, these aren't the, our horses. These horses are different. And the second unit director said, well, what did your horse look like, Sean? I said, well, it was brown, like that one there, but it had a big white flash down its thing. <laughs> Design! <laughs> and the next one, these guys come in on a hunt of paint and painting the front of the horse to make it look like the horses we were working on the day before. And Johnny got, Johnny Beach got quite upset about the way the horses were treated. My part in that was 18 weeks. Um, and he was a bit of a rat bag and he ended up dealing drugs or something and then and disappeared out of the program. Supposedly being, um, uh, added to the Auckland Airport uh, extension runway, apparently. He was sort of buried in concrete because he was a nasty drug dealer. But I had a scene with Simon Trast in that. It was very funny, where Alistair loses the plot and grabs um, Simon's character and throws him across the room, sort of thing. 
remember picking up Simon like this, throwing him against the wall. And sometimes when you act, you, you're right there, you know, you're there in that bloody moment. Um, it's actually losing control, but anyway, I'd lost the control and I was right in it. And I hear this cut, cut coming down, and floor managers rushing on, saying, No, stop, stop. And apparently, when I'd picked up Simon and thrown against the wall, the whole set, sort of the Monty John Cleese Python thing, and wandered all over the place as I smashed this young actor into the thingy. And, and the look on his face was sort of. <laughs> Yeah, he's gone mad. Oh dear, it's going to be very ugly. I wonder if he'll hurt me. It was a gem, I thought. TV3 picked it up in the early days. Um, and more, um, forget the guy's name, he was the commissioner over there, just sort of went with it. Because it's a bit out there. It was very silly. And it was written and conceived by a very good friend of mine by the name of Matt Bokert. And he and I sort of sat down on a weekend. And there were three of us. There was Matt, myself, and a chap by the name of Johnny Walker. And Johnny Walker helped a lot. And we just came up with stupid, silly ideas. And then Matt literally would take all these bits of paper and stuff we'd written and go downstairs in the basement in front of an imperial, he had a desk with an imperial typewriter and, and that was it. And, and then proceeded to write script, which we then looked at again and refined. Now that was, that went to air at, at TV3 and we did seven of them, seven eps. And they were thinking of, um, you know, rolling it over, doing a second series, but it never came to fruition. And I think it may have been a wee bit before its time in a way. I haven't spoken about this really to anyone, but unfortunately I went down to Wellington and I got remarkably ill. I had um, gastro problems and I felt really sick. Well, I couldn't very well say to people, oh, look, can I have a week or two weeks off to recover from this because that's 80, 90 people sort of standing around. So I felt that I never really was able to get into the stride of the piece. And it's something that when I, I, I've, I, I never, I've only watched it earlier this year. It was on um, Heartland, I think, Heartland Channel or something. And it's the first time I'd watched it. And I thought, what a missed opportunity that was. It was a missed opportunity. Because I know, looking at it, I could have done considerably better. Mark Hadlow was in that with me, and that uh, little short film um, were the seeds of a very uh, strong creative partnership with him for the comedy ser TV series, and he was brilliant to work with. Um, we really bounced off each other very well for the TV series, and Tandy as well. That was a good shoot. That was an enjoyable, those three um, series we did. I got the best um, comedy actor award for that. But I always thought that Mark should have got it in a way, because um, he has got a very fine comedic thing about him. And I sort of felt I was more his fall guy, if you know what I mean, the straight man to his thing. And Mike Smith directed the series as well. And that rated really well. It grew. So they, at least they gave it more than one series. But then it was canned. We were up for a fourth and we'd already had a, like a meeting and, uh, for script development for the fourth series, but then they pulled the plug on it. Because we were told that the programmers thought it was too old-fashioned. <laughs>